So over the last two years, I have been learning what it means to be a consultant or better said, a software developer and consultant. And I realized that there are dozens and dozens of life lessons that I have learned already. And I wanted to share with you the four biggest ones so far. And I feel like I can provide some valuable insights because not too long ago, I was a complete beginner. So I know exactly what it feels like to know nothing. Nobody wants to feel dumb, but often asking an expert with decades of experience isn't as helpful as asking someone who's just ahead of you in the process. And to be honest, some of the solutions to these problems I was having are so simple that you won't believe it. So in this video, I wanna tell you the four things I wish I knew before becoming a software consultant or the four things I wish I knew sooner after becoming one. Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Griffin Lickfell and I am a Microsoft Dynamics and Power Platform developer and consultant. But no matter what sort of consulting or software development work you do, the content in this video is going to apply to your work and potentially even your life. Okay, so the first thing I wish I knew when I first became a software consultant was to get rid of my imposter syndrome. Now, imposter syndrome is basically feeling like you don't belong or that you aren't qualified to be where you are. Let me be honest with you, you are right where you're supposed to be. Whatever situation you are in, whether you've started or you haven't, it is perfectly normal to feel a little intimidated. Trust me, trust me when I say that I have some colleagues with decades, yes, plural, decades of experience that will still tell you they feel imposter syndrome. The thing that's interesting about tech, software, and even business is that it's constantly changing. Because it's constantly changing, this can cause you to feel like you're not an expert because you don't know the latest and greatest. Well, I hate to break it to you, but you're never always going to be up to date. And the reality is most projects that I work on, the clients don't expect me to be. We put this pressure on ourselves to be experts and perfect and know everything, but at the end of the day, admitting that you don't know something speaks way louder than acting like you're an expert. I'm actually going to link a great book down in the description down below that talks about this topic. It's a book by Pat Lencioni called Getting Naked. Here, here hold up. And the book is basically built on the principle that if you don't know something, you should admit that instead of acting like you know it or know more than you do about the topic. It takes the principle of being vulnerable and real with your client so that you can build trust. And I can honestly say that Pat is right. Nobody likes a know-it-all. And if you are someone who occasionally admits when they don't know something, then this means when you say you do know something and are an expert, it just has way more credibility and trust in what you're saying. It makes your I do knows more impactful and trustworthy. Additionally, I heard this comment that consultants are actually just great Googlers. While it's obviously important to be educated, I often have to rely on additional resources to remember how to do some nitpicky configuration or to Google what a certain acronym that the client is using, what it means. So chalk your imposter syndrome, you're right where you're supposed to be. Now I need to preface tip number two so that you don't misinterpret what I'm saying. In the corporate world, in the consulting world, in the software development world, it is so easy for your time to just disappear. You will have one meeting after the next, after the next, and then respond to a chat message and respond to an email and go get a drink of water, watch some YouTube, go grab some food. I'm kidding. But for real, time can escape us and cause us not to be as focused. Tip number two is not setting aside uninterrupted time to focus as this is super valuable, but I'm going to assume you already know this. So I wanted to share a concept that works well for me and that is the do it now principle. Essentially, this just means if you have a task that will take less than five minutes to do, you should just do it now. This is because our brains are pretty bad at switching modes or different things that we're working on. And for something that will only take five minutes now, if you were to put it off and then come back to it later, your brain is gonna have to switch into that mode and ultimately take longer than if you were to have just done it then and there. Also, this means you're a lot less likely to forget about the little commitments that you made like sending an email or a chat message or an update. I've also learned that getting things done right away goes a long way with your work relationships. If someone asks you a question and a response to that question will really only take you 30 seconds, 
going ahead and responding to that person quickly and giving them what they need is going to make you a superhero in their eyes. Tip number three is more related to software development than it is consulting, but that is that testing is just as important as building. I found that I enjoy building software solutions and showcasing them to the client. I think this is because like any consultant, I'm always trying to bring business value and deliverables to the customer. And building components that are ultimately going to save them time and money in the future are very easily seen as good investments. Now where the business value is not so clear is with testing. The value is certainly there, but it's not as glamorous as this new widget you've built or screen or app you've made. Because I also felt this way, I was super lackluster in my effort of testing the items I built because I would just wanna get on to the next item to build. I would build it, spend almost no time. I would spend some, but certainly not enough time validating that it was working correctly in all aspects and move on to the next thing. Well, this came back to bite me because when the time came for all of these parts I was building to come together and work as one solution, there were a bunch of bugs and little oversights on my part. I mean, the project was fine, but I then had to spend a lot of time fixing these bugs that should have just never been there in the first place. Without giving explicit examples, it's tricky to explain, but essentially what I was doing was I was testing the ideal scenario for the components I was building or what I might call the happy path. End users of the system are likely not going to be entering data or interacting with the software the exact same way every time. So this is going to produce less than ideal scenarios. For example, say I am building an automated email notification with Power Automate to send an email to my manager. Instead of just testing, okay, did the email send? Yep, all right, it's good. I also need to test what happens when my manager is missing an email or what happens when my user doesn't have a manager. These are the type of scenarios that I'm talking about when I'm referring to better testing. If you are thinking to yourself, I need to get into low code development or learn about the Power Platform, then I want to personally invite you to sign up for this completely free self-paced course that's going to teach you everything you need to know in order to begin developing the Power Platform today. Not too long ago, I was a complete beginner and I didn't even know what the Power Platform was, but in just two years, I have taken control of my career and I can truly say that I love what I do. The content in this course is handpicked by me so that you can know and understand everything you need to know to begin developing on the Power Platform, as well as prepare you for the PL900 if you're looking for a certification as well. If you are interested, be sure to follow the first link in the description down below and do not forget to use code YouTube at checkout to get the course for completely free. This will give you immediate access to all of the course content so that you can begin learning and change your future today. Now our final tip today is actually three principles all rolled up into one tip. And these three principles are things that I would recommend you do first or at least start working towards once you begin software development or consulting or your career. These three principles are going to allow you to stand out from your peers in a dramatic way. These three things are going to allow you to build an excellent brand. And these three things are going to allow you to get more work done without any additional effort. Oh, and you can begin implementing these into your workflows today. These three principles are covered in detail in this video on the channel right here. Thank you guys so much for sticking to the end of the video. My name is Griffin Lickfeld, the host of Citizen Developer. Consider subscribing and connecting with me on LinkedIn with the link in the description down below. And I'm excited to connect with you guys in the next one.